1914, San Diego was going through a really bad drought. The city of San Diego was desperate for a solution. They were looking for someone to bring the rain. And here comes a supposed rain man, Charles Hatfield. San Diego hired Hatfield at the rate of $1,000 per every inch of rain he could produce in 1916. So just after the start of the new year, Hatfield and his brother went 50 miles outside of San Diego to release mystery chemicals into the atmosphere. And surprisingly, five days later, the rain started and did not stop, leading to devastating flooding in San Diego. Now, historians have looked back on this sequence of events and deemed it a coincidence. Hatfield did not control the weather. But this story made me wonder, was this pseudoscientist onto something? And is there a way to control the weather? Well, why not? Most modern day efforts to control the weather center around one key concept known as cloud seeding. It's this idea that humans can increase a cloud's ability to produce ice and therefore precipitation. When precipitation happens naturally, water vapor freezes around nuclei like aerosols or dust. And once those icy nuclei become big and heavy enough, they fall from clouds as precipitation. And in cloud seeding, we add more nuclei into the atmosphere for water vapor to latch onto, hopefully increasing the number of opportunities to create those icy nuclei and thus increasing precipitation. This process is typically done via airplane or ground gauges with the basic idea, more nuclei, more ice, more precipitation. But this idea of cloud seeding is not new. The first theories of cloud seeding date back to the 1890s. And the first experiments date back to a couple of scientists working at General Electric in the 1940s. These first experiments were conducted by these guys. And this guy, Bernard Vonnegut, who was actually Kurt Vonnegut's older brother, figured out that silver iodide's hexagonal crystal structure was optimal for growing ice. And in 1946, he took his test to the sky, flying over the mountains of upstate New York and Western Massachusetts to see if cloud seeding actually works. But we don't need silver iodide and an airplane to experiment if cloud seeding actually works. Let me show you. This is so fun. We can observe how cloud seeding works using these materials. And to do this right, we're gonna run four experiments. Our goal is to mimic atmospheric conditions in these jars with a temperature differential, aerosols, to see how much visible water vapor forms. All right, let's move into the matrix. In each of these jars, we're gonna add 200 milliliters of boiling water. This is gonna act as the warm surface of the earth. Our control, no ice, no spray, will be capped. For our next jar, we're gonna add the cap and put ice on the lid to mimic the temperature differential between earth and outer space. Now, now let's add just aerosols to our next jar and add the lid. And finally, we're gonna add aerosols, add the lid and put ice on top and watch this experiment play out. You can see in each of these jars that water vapor is forming, but in the jar with aerosols and ice, you can see that the vapor is much more opaque, much more visible, creating a cloud in a jar. And the real difference is here, comparing our atmosphere with our cloud seeded atmosphere. There's a very clear visual difference between these two jars. But just because our cloud in a jar experiment worked, does that mean cloud seeding actually works in practice? Well, this question has been hotly debated since those original experiments done by GE in the 1940s. During the 1960s, the US federal government actually invested a lot of money into the research and science behind cloud seeding. Mainly the US government, and by the US government, I mean the military, wanted to know if they could control the weather. And if they could, they wanted to be the first to figure it out. Some federal projects at the time, such as Project Cirrus and Project Storm Fury had very noble intentions, such as can we break apart hurricanes before they impact the United States? Spoiler, the answer is no. But then there were other projects such as Operation Popeye that had much more malicious intent, asking the question, can we extend the monsoon season 
to limit movement on the Ho Chi Minh Trail? Spoiler, the answer was inconclusive. Interestingly enough, because of all of this investment, in 1977, after Operation Popeye and the Vietnam War, the UN created and enacted a treaty to ban weather modification for warfare, known as the Environmental Modification Convention. And after this treaty, the United States' investment in cloud seeding kind of just dried up. At the same time, there started to be concerns about the impacts of silver iodide in our atmosphere, precipitation, and in our runoff. I mean, Silver itself is a very toxic metal, especially for aquatic animals. So naturally you have to extend that concern to silver's more stable, insoluble cousin, silver iodide. In the 1970s, as silver iodide was being used more frequently, there were multiple reports published that the impacts of silver iodide in the environment were actually negligible. However, more recently, under the Clean Water Act, the EPA has actually deemed silver iodide to be a toxic substance. Even with those environmental concerns, in the past 20 years, there's actually been a resurgence in cloud seeding. Across the UAE, Australia, China, cloud seeding has started to make a comeback. The most conclusive evidence we have to does cloud seeding actually work comes from a 2017 project for the state of Idaho. This was known as Project Snowy. The goal of Project Snowy was to increase snowpack in the mountains of Idaho. So in 2017, the state of Idaho got funding from the National Science Foundation, the National Center for Atmospheric Research, and a few universities to see if cloud seeding could actually work. So between January 7th and March 17th of 2017, the Idaho Power Company performed airborne seeding using silver iodide over the Payette Basin in Idaho. And for this experiment, the scientists set up a bunch of weather sensors to see if they could catch the crystallization of ice in the atmosphere. And that's exactly what they found. Specifically, by using Doppler radar to track reflectivity in the atmosphere. The reflectivity they detected matched the flight pattern and dispersion of silver iodide, and an increase in overall precipitation for the 2017 snow season. But as much as I want to draw a conclusion that cloud seeding does indeed work, that was one very specific science experiment. Who knows if 2017 could have just been a year of abnormally high snowfall. And it honestly could have just been a coincidence, just like Hatfield's chemicals and the 1916 San Diego floods. So where does this leave us? In all my research for this video, the outcomes of cloud seeding were inconclusive, maybe optimistic at best, so we still don't really know if cloud seeding works in practice. I mean, yes, theoretically it should work based on our experiment in the kitchen and GE's experiments in the 1940s and Project Snowy, but science experiments in a lab are so much different than experiments in the atmosphere. And it's really hard to run controlled experiments when it comes to weather. Having a control and an experimental version for testing atmosphere dynamics is impossible. And that's where I have to leave this video. I don't know if cloud seeding truly works, but I hope you enjoyed going down the rabbit hole. And if you enjoyed this video or have any suggestions for future videos, leave them in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next one. LinkedIn photo.